anisotropic materials has different response in different direction. To define a Hill 48 yield model, we start with three tensile tests at 0, 45, and 90 degree orientation. Force displacement response from different orientation has been converted to engineering stress strain response. If at this strain material starts to yield at each direction, then the yield stress at 0 degree orientation is about 10 MPa, yield stress for 90 or CD orientation is about 9.5 MPa, and yield stress at 45 degree orientation is 8.5 MPa. We can get yield stress ratio by dividing each of the yield stresses by the yield stress at 0 degree orientation. This normalized quantity will be called yield stress ratio at 0, 45, and 90 degree orientation. Let's consider this equation. It gives Hill 48 theoretical yield stress ratio at any direction theta. That means if we put theta is equal to 0, we will get theoretical Hill 48 yield stress ratio at 0 degree. Similarly, putting this theta to be 45 and 90, we get the rest of the Hill 48 theoretical yield stress ratios. But to do so, we have to know the right values of these coefficients f, g, h, and n. Let us use this equation to code a small function in MATLAB. This equation is written here, 1, 1 divided by square root of, and it contains this expression, f, sine, and g, and it goes up to here. The theta angle is written as a and g. In this function, when you put a particular value of f, g, h, and n, like this, these values goes into this equation. Further, for angle or theta value of 0, 45, and 90, these values are put as a and g in this equation. And for i is equal to 1 to 3, as the loop runs, you get three values of r predictor as output from this function called Funhill. This is the function Funhill in MATLAB. So look again, it's a function of f, g, h, and n. This means in this function, Funhill, I can put any value of f, g, h, n and run this script. Let's run this script again. And the output is these three values. These are the theoretical Hill 48 yield stress ratios in 0, 45, and 90 degree. If we choose f to be 1, g to be 2, h to be 3, and n to be 4. So these are the values. Note that we have uh, written the theoretical value as a superscript of PR. So PR stands for predictor. However, these values of theoretical Hill 48 anisotropic ratios are not close to the experimental ratios. This happened because we made a very wild guess of what value we should use for these coefficients. But instead, if we has used this strange value of this coefficient and run this script, we would see that the theoretical anisotropy values are 1, 0 0.85, and 0 0.95, which are exactly the same as the experimental anisotropic ratios. So these values to get, we have to optimize and we have to optimize a cost function that takes this difference between this theoretical prediction and actual experimental anisotropic ratio in each direction. So the prediction minus the test. So there is a deviation here. Similarly, there is a deviation between test and prediction at 45 
and at 90 degree orientations. We will further square these uh, deviations. So the addition of all these deviation is the cost. And this is the cost of choosing a wrong uh, set of coefficient values. If we choose the coefficients to be 1, 2, 3, 4, the cost is high. But if we choose the coefficients to be something like this, then the cost is really low. So in optimization, by minimizing or optimizing this cost, we will get those nice values of f, g, h, and n, which I have shown you earlier here. To know more detail about setting up a cost function for optimization in MATLAB, please check the link in the description. We will write the cost function as function of CF, where CF1 is F, CF2 is G, CF3 is H, and CF4 is N. So these three coefficients are put into this uh, function fun hill. So just remember that uh, if we put those three coefficient in the function fun hill as output, we get this uh, array of three values containing the theoretical anisotropic ratio at zero, 45 and 90 degrees orientation. Further, we have put all the experimental values of this anisotropic ratio in an array called R experimental. So this R predictor minus R experimental squared and then added together with the function sum is exactly the same expression as this expression here. Once we have this cost function as a function of CF, CF has four entries, then we can put this cost function in this MATLAB function f min con and then optimize this one with a starting value of 0.5 within the range of 0.25 and 2. This means for optimization, we are asking f min con to try at the beginning to put this value of 0.05 to each of this value of f, g, h, and n, and then start the optimization. And the optimization, as it goes forward, f mincon will try different values of these parameters within a range of 0.25 to 2, which is a normal range for these coefficient values. So it will do a lot of iteration and search for the right value of this coefficient between this lower and upper limit. And for each time, it will evaluate the fun hill and get the theoretical values and compare that with experimental value and calculate the cost. And it will keep calculating the cost until it thinks that it has minimized the cost enough. So let's see what happens if we run this code. As the optimization has stopped, we get this value of f, g, h, and n. Remember, these are the same values that I used earlier to you to show that if you use those values to the theoretical uh, hill 48 function fun hill, uh, you will get the output theoretical uh, anisotropic ratios to be exactly same as test anisotropy ratios. And by that, you have optimized the coefficients f, g, h, and n in a hill 48 yield function. And the value of these coefficients are here. There are two more coefficients l and m in the hill function, but you will consider that those uh, parameter values are one each. If you further want to calculate the pl plastic potentials using this value of coefficients, you can use these equations here. And these parameters or potentials can be then put into uh, softwares like Abacus to define the Hill 48 yield function. To do so, first we have sorted out this output four values 
as value first one to be f second one to be g third one to be h and the next one to be n then used these values in the equation i just showed you earlier to calculate these potentials and of course then you can put all those in a single array as your input for abacus let's say you are defining a material in abacus hill 48 and then you started with defining the elastic parameters to define hill 48 you can then go to mechanical plasticity plastic and uh, this is the place where you will put your hardening curve and uh, in most cases this hardening curve is the curve that you get for zero degree orientation the plastic strain and true stress of this particular curve after you are done with defining hardening then to get the potential you have to go to sub option and potential and there you can put this r1 r2 r3 r12 r13 and r23 values and by doing that your hill 48 material anisotropic material has been defined in a separate video i have shown how you can plot your hill 48 yield function together with von mises yield function and it was clear from the plot that your experimental zero degree and 90 degree ill stress ratio is uh, very close to the uh, hill 48 yield function the code to the previous hill 48 uh, plastic potential optimization or yield function coefficient optimization together with the code to plot and compare this hill 48 and von mises yield uh, surfaces are given in a link in the description of this video